So we're here looking at uh, what are typically known as ofrendas, which simply means offerings in Spanish, and they include music, photos, memorabilia, but also a lot of food. I'm trying to understand in some of my own works something similar. That is the way that salt uh, comes to acquire the characteristics or the values uh, of, of other kinds of communities and the way they reflect relationships uh, in a sense. And so I'm very drawn to these, these altars in part for that reason. Um, food, including mundane things like salt, takes on this remarkable symbolic kind of uh, weight uh, and reflects particular kinds of relationships in society. This is a, a project on uh, tracing salt from from stages of production to its trade to its consumption um, over several centuries. And it comes out of my research on rituals in Mexico. I'm very interested in ritual practices uh, as ways of not only maintaining stability in a society, but also allowing some kind of transformation in society. The story is often told with respect to those European kinds of pursuits, the market value that salt would have had and sometimes we lose sight of all the other ways that people um, thought about salt. The fact that they were gods of salt or patron saints of salt and that these saints and gods gave salt the kind of transcendent meaning by understanding salt as a medicine in addition to a food. By understanding salt as a, a sacred food rather than just a, a, an everyday one, one that's used to mark festival occasions. And I'd like to understand why those practices endure in the midst of very serious um, modernizing processes. I really appreciated the way he views these two, the dimensions, the secular and the spiritual, not just as compatible, but really interdependent. In order to arrive at the truth of what these salt producers were living, you have to examine both dimensions. And this is something that I've found in my own studies as I'm majoring in something biological and, and theology. It allows for a much more comprehensive and authentic understanding of the culture and the lives of the people he's studying. I just think it's, it's interesting to write a commodity history that, that imagines saints and other kinds of extraterrestrial figures as consumers or producers. We still tend to think of work in terms of an individual, but it's often a, a community and a set of relationships that makes things. So I, I, I chose the Notre Dame Institute for Advanced Study for a variety of reasons. One of them was I wanted a place uh, that, that had a community of scholars especially focused on questions of religion and value and meaning. And that's been extremely useful since I've been here. I've, I find that people care about these questions uh, more than, than is typical. And the Notre Dame Institute for Advanced Study has that optimal kind of balance for work and conversation. And the conversations have been fantastic, as I imagined. I also wanted to be in conversation with scholars from other disciplines. So I like that uh, the Institute pushes beyond to social sciences, occasionally the sciences and philosophy to incorporate their perspectives. What I appreciate most about his project is its interdisciplinarity, because he's examining a question that is predominantly historical but he's looking at it through the lens of economics, politics, religion, and even medicine in some cases. And so it's really opened my mind to the way that uh, disciplines overlap. So I think that the community here at the Institute really is unparalleled in a lot of different ways, um, but particularly in the way that there is interdisciplinary dialogue between really distinguished fellows in a, in a variety of disciplines, the way they engage one another on questions of value. And I think that this really adds value to the academic community of Notre Dame as a whole, and even us as undergraduates, um, that we can learn from distinguished fellows and have their research inform what we pursue um, in our own personal careers and research is really an extraordinary opportunity. The, the Institute gave us the opportunity to work with an undergraduate research assistant. And I, I don't know if I just got lucky, but uh, mine is Sofia Carozza, and uh, she is one of those uh, super talented Notre Dame undergraduates. Um, she's been reading for me 
in uh, three languages, uh, Spanish and French in addition to English. I, I would say she's doubled my productivity at, at Notre Dame. Uh, she's been really, really fantastic. To anyone considering uh, the Notre Dame Institute for Advanced Study, I would say that it's an almost perfect blend of structure and uh, informal time to write and research and reflect deeply on ideas. And I think that's one of the benefits of having this year away is that I'll go back and, and be more effective in the classroom without doubt, absolutely.